Hello, my miraculous friend, and welcome to another episode of the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. This is Reverend Francis Faden, and I'm so excited to be with you today, and I'm so grateful that you're going to get to meet one of the most amazing people on the planet and a very good friend of mine, Sonia of, of Disappear Fear. And we're going to be doing something a little different today. Rather than just having an interview, we're also going to be having some music, live concert right, right here on the podcast. I'm so excited. But before we do all that, Let's get ourselves centered and grounded. Take a few deep breaths together. And just allowing ourselves to let go of whatever happened before we got here and tuned in, whatever's gonna happen later. If you're driving, please keep your eyes open, but you can still focus on your breath. And just start to feel that you're creating a space within yourself to receive this inspiration, to receive this music, to receive this story. Knowing that whatever it is that you need to hear, whatever it is that will really fill up your heart today is exactly what's gonna be happening. So let's take one more deep breath together in gratitude and we can begin. All righty. Well, welcome back once again, my friends. I wanna introduce you to a very, very dear friend of mine who happens to be one of the people on the planet who I think magnifies her miracles every day in, in the work that she does. And I've known her for quite a while, so I can attest to her story and how she has really lived her purpose, which is one of the things that you and I as highly sensitive, highly creative people, we're all aspiring to do. So I really want you to take in, not even just her story, but her energy, because she's really amazing. So. My friend is uh, Sonia Rutstein. She is a world-class composer and artist. Her, she's won so many awards, like six Glamour Awards, one for being Female Artist of the Year, um, an award for the best album, uh, so many different uh, types of awards. And she is, let's see, how many albums do you have out now? It's like uh, 21 albums. And um, the thing that's so amazing about Sonia is that she's been able to say yes to what the universe has asked her to do in a really powerful way that has touched lives, transformed lives, healed, you know, sent out such a powerful message. And it's such an honor for me to really welcome her. So please help me welcome my good friend, Sonia of Disappear Fear. Thank you. I think that's the most amazing introduction I've ever gotten in my life. Oh my goodness, Sonia, it's so great to see you and and to just you're you've been my inspiration since I was 20 years old and you're still my inspiration and I know that you're an inspiration um all, all around the world, but not only just for your music but for who you are and the fact that you you know when in my work with Mother Mary, Mother Mary says the definition of a saint is somebody who says absolute yes to what God's asking them to do. And that's you, like you've said the biggest, loudest yes to what the universe is asking you to do. So I'm just so grateful to be able to, uh, to have you here and to introduce you to other people. So it's so great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are an inspiration to me as well. Thank you. My it's friend. pretty amazing that both of us follow our path. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I always like to ask my guests the very first question, and I know you have a very deep spiritual, spiritual connection, but what is your definition of a miracle? Okay. Um, just as we, as you mentioned that you were going to ask me that first, I've been like, my brain has been flooding with <laughs> things. The first thing I th that I thought of though, was just to um, share the idea of what Albert Einstein said, that you can either live your, I don't know, I haven't, maybe yeah. other people have said this, but that you can even live your life as um, nothing is a miracle, or you can live your life as if everything is. And um, clearly we choose the latter <laughs> um, because, you know, and I think too, <clears throat> as an American, <clears throat> in uh, that that um, you know will show me you know that that kind of you know um, religious spiritual versus actuality or yeah. uh, physical evidence also um, pl plays a part in it just because 
you know, that's how we're, 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 we're taught in school and, and, you know, you can feel the earth beneath you and like, yeah. what do you mean? You know, but then again, there's the little prince, um, the most important Saint Exupery, there's the most important things are invisible to the eye. So that's true too, but yeah. somewhere between those things. Um, uh, that's great. Um, I, um, I, I mean, you know, one time it was Hanukkah and we had to drive down to North Carolina to see Terry's nephew, Jason, because he was shipping out the next day to Afghanistan. And it was also the first night of Hanukkah and this huge snowstorm happened. And the fact that we didn't like spin out like m so many tract, we couldn't get off the highway because so many semis had, 18 wheelers had, um, you know, spun off. Uh, over the um, in, on the ramps, getting off or getting yeah. on or whatever, yeah. And so it was really dangerous. Well, anyway, we made it down to North Car Carolina on a quarter of a tank of gas. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it was just amazing that we didn't have to get off the highway. It was a van that normally got twenty three miles to the hour, so it was just one of it was just it was That's definitely a miracle. A miracle but yeah. There, that that's a whomper miracle. <laughs> that's a Hanukkah miracle. It's like the quarter of a tank of gas lasted the whole time. <laughs> right. Or I can name another one, which is my phone had one percent. What happened was we were in Sydney. This is just last year. I mean, this this is a def. These are like definite scientific proven yeah. like yeah. miracles. Um, I had one percent of power left on my phone, and I I mentioned it to Terry, but I had it in my pocket, and we were getting onto a subway to go someplace. We had just gotten into Australia. And she got on the subway and the doors closed and I was on, not on the subway and right. I had 1%. So right. I was like, oh no, I, I, I didn't know where she was going. I didn't know yeah. how to get to where it was. I wasn't sure what stop it was and we couldn't communicate like I was, but then as I was in my craziness, she actually called, it actually rang and said, <laughs> stay where you are. I'm coming back. So, and it worked out and then, it, you know, but in, in those few seconds it, and then, you know, then that was it. But the 1% just happened to like last for that. You know what I mean? Cause it yeah. can just, you pick up your phone and then it just dies. It just it dies. Right. Uh, totally. So I have a zillion things like that. I have, when yeah. I wrote the song, well, actually I could, I'll demonstrate it when I do the song, um, won't let go because that song in my life, yeah. you know, what birthed that song was absolutely a miracle. Yeah. Um, oh, good. I'm excited. I'm excited to hear that. Cool. All right. Well, let's let's let people know who you are in terms of your story. So our listeners are highly sensitive, highly creative. A lot of them are spiritual entrepreneurs. And, you know, what I've found is that a lot of people don't take the leap to becoming entrepreneurs with their creativity. They have a really hard time trusting and saying yes. And I'm wondering if you could share with us the turning point for you that helped you to say yes to what you what you feel like is your calling all these years later it's like it just seems like it's your life but i know there was a time where you made a very conscious decision to say yes absolutely um you know as a kid you're you know like you you look or i did look to my parents to you know do something that um was steady and regular and you know so that i'm going to be safe <laughs> and that sort of thing and yeah um it just kept coming back to what I love to do. And it was really just a conversation I had with Cindy. And that was like, well, you write great songs. You could, maybe you could do that. You know, why don't you, why don't you do that? And that's when I was 19. And I, you know, um, I, at that point, I think I was 19. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, so yeah, so that was like that was sort of the thing. Um, I mean, I had co I did go to college after that, and but I would use all my, um, you know, my grant money. I bought a guitar. I bought speakers so that I could play with a band. You know, the big kind of speakers. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, and and it was just yeah uh, yeah. So um, every everything kind of pointed to that, but. I, 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 there's a thing too, that's really empowered me lately that really spoke to me. And it, it was from, um, Rabbi Ben, I think his last name is, Shal um, she, I'm not sure of his last name, but it's a S C H something. Um, so I, uh, um, so what it was, was this was 
the Torah portion for last Saturday was about, it's a very uh, sensual poem about Israel and God, Israel loving God and God loving Israel. And um, there's a point in it that he spoke about that says, I was sleeping, um, but my heart was awake. And that applies to so many things. And what the sleeping means is like I was I was confident, I was but I was cozy in bed. And you can say that like with your life, like you're you're cozy in bed, you don't want to get out, you know, but opportunity is knocking, you know, because God was knocking at the door and that your heart was awake. It's like you knew what there was something there. But, you know, you're co so basically, I guess the bottom line was opportunity is not convenient, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, but it's so rewarding. And it's that's so really true. where uh, that's really where uh, the moments of our life and the magic shows up. Like you can't figure it out. You know, it's not guaranteed money in the bank. It's not guaranteed anything. But that's, you know, we're not here very long anyway. So, I mean, you might as well live as best as, yeah. as, you know, as much as you can follow your heart. Yeah, absolutely. So I know you were like doing the singer songwriter thing. You had a band in your twenties and all of that, but you also have a call to political activism, speaking up, waking people up, helping people to understand things. I mean, your, your hero, Phil Oaks was very much that kind of a, a singer songwriter. So then right around at the end of your twenties, it shifted from just being in a band to your your current band, which is Disappear Fear. And so tell people what Disappear Fear means, because I know that that's the essence of really your heart is that message. Yeah. And no one needs to learn it more than I do. <laughs> yeah. No matter how much I push it away, <laughs> seems like. Um, uh, well, what happened was I was writing songs and I was in, in in a band and we would do some cover songs and we did a lot of my my songs, but they were like formula songs. And um, I, I don't, I, I went to see a Jane Sibbery concert and I just loved her music and it was so weird. And yeah. I didn't, I kept turning people on to her music because I just thought she was amazing. This is what her first album, yeah. The Order's Here. And um, I, re I, I guess maybe I started writing something that was really real a real song, really what I needed to say and really what I needed to discover. A and I will say that my journey is figured out through a lot through my songs. It's like, because when I'm writing it, it's this, this conduit of energy and uh, uh, pure truth. And um, I'm not, I don't kind of, it's like uh, on the good, in the good times, I don't really get in the way of that. Like, yeah. Uh, my limitations of my body or my thoughts about myself or any kind of judgments. It's just like, whoa, you know, it's just like breath really. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, and materializing that into frequencies. <laughs> so, um, so, so, I, so yeah. So, and um, I didn't want to do, I didn't, I, I guess I just also got in touch with that, that's who I want to be. Like I, oh, this is another thing that happened is that um, this woman named Mary Pat Hughes called me and said she went to see a really cool concert, but that it didn't, it was like, what was the, how could we make something that would bring in, you know, lesbians and that really p empowering feeling of, yay, we're women and, or we're women and that's cool into really good music, not just, um, not just music that would speak to the idea of coming out and or being, you know, in the past right. abused as a lesbian or whatever, you know, so. Um, and so, so we cr created this, like Mary Pat said, let's just create this really great all women kick ass band. And all of those things, I think, together form that. But I mean, we were a kick ass band, but we really weren't out about, there was no one that was out about. Right you know, their, who they really loved and that it was really, no one said, yeah, you know what? It's really okay to be gay in the real world, not yep. just to the lesbian community, but to just be, you know, right. and that was, that was the of disappear fear. Um, when you disappear fear between people, what you have is love. And that doesn't, 
uh, uh, discriminate uh, between, um, you know, the LGBT community and the H community as in heterosexual, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, we just are. And um, yeah, so um, what what your gender is, you know, they're, they're, I'm, I know that they're psychological and physiological things, indoor and outdoor plumbing, yes. you know, and <laughs> chromosomes and all that stuff. But that said, the essence of our molecules and our beingness yeah. um, is, is, uh, is, is divine. And yep. that divinity doesn't discriminate. I love that. This, I'm going to write that down. Divinity doesn't discriminate. Oh, that's awesome. I think, I mean, like you can look at anything and any words that really are of value, whether it's like Emily Dickinson or Nelson Mandela, you know, they spoke what was coming through to them, whether they were in prison or writing at a small desk or hiding, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it's like it's in the listening. Yeah. And the hearing. I, I, I was there when you were making the, the shift into yes. uh, disappear fear. <laughs> And I remember um, having conversations about it. And one of the things that you had shared with me that has always stuck with me is you were like, all right, if I'm going to create something like rather than just doing a formula of what I think other people are going to like, what do I really want my life to be about? What do I want the like when I'm gone, what do I want to leave here that I think is going to have the most impact? And that's when you were like, I really think it's that disappear fear, because if we could disappear fear, like you said, between people. Um, and within ourselves, then everything's possible because that's the energy. And I've seen you live that as best as you can. Obviously, you're still learning. I'm still learning. But it's been a guiding force for me as well. This idea of, you know, people say, what would you do if you weren't afraid? And it's such a really important question to ask yourselves because I think that that is informing our choices more than we realize the fact that we're afraid. And it's okay Absolutely. to be afraid. but just don't be unconscious about the fact that you're afraid. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think of that, like, that's basically, that's the essence of it right there. And I remember our conversation as well. We were um, uh, uh, outside um, UMBC in that little garden yeah, area. Yeah, I remember. It's like mostly concrete and like a couple <laughs> trees. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I think we were having lunch. And, yeah. um, and you know, actually we were, but I, I also think we're a snack or something, but... Um, um, that's like maybe like one of the few times in my life where I remember the conversation more than the food. I'm not kidding. Like that's like, I you know, understand. How much war, what it smelled right. like. But, but I remember the food. I, I remember it too. <laughs> you know, and if I don't, it's, it means there was something else, you know. Yeah much more significant. So yeah. Well, that was a turning was. point because you, you also were contemplating leaving your day job and doing this full time. And there yeah. was a lot of fear around that. You were like, you're like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to need to come out. And there was some fear around that. Like this was before the Indigo Girls, right? Like this was before everything. You were really a trailblazer and like, I'm going to, I'm going to sing my truth. You know, I'm going to be who I am and, and really own that. And so yeah. you've, you've been able to do that. And nowadays, I mean, you're all over the world. I know that you tour not only in the United States. I mean, this is obviously pre COVID, but uh, you were talking about Australia, really big in Germany. I'd love for you to tell us a little bit more about how, how disappear fear manifested for you with going to Germany. Cause I know you didn't want to go. You had some fear <laughs> about going. I didn't. Um, <clears throat> I was raised, you know, um, to, to, to fear the Nazis. I mean, you know, in Germany, yeah. it was like, there was no difference when, um, that was just not good. And, um, that's a place, you know, just, there's just the, the degree of evil <laughs> just is, is, you know, uh, you like just unbelievable and um and it clearly it is unbelievable to some people because they want to say that it never happened <laughs> right but, yeah. but it did happen and um the holocaust happened and um it's certainly impacted the jewish population and jewish theology um and and it transformed the world um 
to the fact that Jews got to have a Jewish state where they knew that there would be a place when and if, and I suppose it's more of a when, that um, there was that kind of fear <laughs> penetrated into human beings again to be able to scapegoat a section of society yeah. Yeah. to blame for all the problems of, of the world um, that they have a haven to go to, that we, I, have a haven yeah. to go to. Yeah. Um, you can come too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your followers. <laughs> um, um, so, um, yeah. Anyway, so that's that's thinking. Um, so it was um, a big deal to go to Germany because you had a lot of stories and a lot of fear about, uh oh, if I go it to this was, place. You know, and it was, and early on, early, what what happened was this. Ger Germany's awesome. I mean, it's a very transformative place for me because yes, I was definitely, you know, uh, and I couldn't stop seeing the past when I was there. You know, you go there and you see the railroad tracks and you think how many cars went over these tracks that took my ancestors to a concentration camp or they right. died in the cars getting there or, right. you know, I mean, I've been to the Holocaust Museum in, um, uh, of course, in Washington, D.C. and you actually uh, smell the smells of the shoe, the pile of shoes and it's like, it's unbelievable. And I've been now, I've been since I've been there 12, 12, uh, 12 or 13 times. I've been going there for 12 years. This is the first spring in 12 years that I haven't been in Germany in the spring. It, ca it started with my, um, I, the guitar company that I uh, love and uh, is, is my other religion, Santa Cruz Guitars, <laughs> which this isn't, this is a Parker, this is an awesome guitar as well. It's just, it's different. But the Santa Cruz was created by Richard Hoover and Richard was selling Santa Cruz, sells was selling more Santa Cruz in Germany than almost like the rest, the whole rest of the world, because people buy buy them there. Um, yeah, and also people come from like Singapore and everywhere to to buy them at that. Um, it's a you know it's like his store. His it was in Frankfurt, Germany. So he wanted me to come because there's the Sonia Santa Cruz model, which is like kind of like an early Gibson, and personalized towards me and made now with an old wood. And they're awesome guitars. Yeah. And I'm so blessed to have that. And that came about pretty early in my career, about five years into my career. Uh, Richard and I developed a relationship and he made this guitar. So, and then 20 years after that, no, 10 years after that, he made the Sonia model because people were asking for it. So yeah. you can get that model guitar. But right now I have it. Um, hydrating because <laughs> it's um, guitars are wood and they're always alive and right. so they change during the winter and the winter was super dry yeah. so right now it's getting a, a spa <laughs> <laughs> my guitar's at the spa <laughs> my guitar's at the spa exactly and then awesome. it, the wood so because the neck moves you know yeah I learned I all know. this stuff from John Thurston my guitar doctor yesterday and he yep. was, I was bringing guitars with different symptoms and things and he told me what to do so that's what's happening with that one right now but it's at the spa um but um germany so one of the early things that happened when i was there i'll just share this with you quickly um was i was asked by the south african guy um in in the hall in this in the foyer or the you know kind of like the lobby area of this hotel and everything the hotel was like three stories and it had a winding marble staircase so it was really loud. So if you had a conversation there, you could hear it like throughout the, the hotel. But anyway, um, and he asked me, he said, Rutstein, ah, Rutstein, is this uh, German or is this Jewish? <laughs> and I said, that's not the, that was, that's the wrong accent, actually, actually. <laughs> um, and I said, uh, Jewish. And I kept hearing it. And we went back up into the room. Um, and he had no issue. I mean, it wasn't like, ah, oh, you know, it was just like, oh, okay. You know, you're American Jewish, got it. Um, and then Terry said, but you're also German. And I said, she goes, your name, Ruch, Rutstein, Rutstein is German. There's German roots, you're both. And I said, you're right, I'm both. I am both. I am the thing that I've been running away from. Yeah. And there you can just run off with those metaphors, can't you? And that reality, because I am German. My grandfather was from Romania, but his name is Gutstein. 
It's 100% German. It means root stone. It's like the cornerstone in a building. Mm -hmm. Anyway, which I love. I love that grounding thing, and it's exactly what I need because yeah. I have to fly off yeah. <laughs> at times <laughs> a lot. So um, anyway, that's the story. Germany's awesome. I love it. I, I've made such close friendships there. Um, yeah, be, so you faced your fear of going, and it opened up an amazing – I think it's a miraculous door that's opened up for you there because they love you. Why wouldn't they love you? We're family. Um, but it's been healing. Yeah, we're family. I love that. And it's been so healing for you. It is. It is. And, um, and also I'm really proud of it too, because what I feel this, and this is, you know, this is me saying this and I think probably will be, would be accepted throughout the world, maybe in 200 years, <laughs> mm -hmm. is that um, the culture that's of Germany, the perfection and the, you know, the calling of, of that, whether whatever, you know, the engineering is of cars right. or of medicine or of anything that they really go into with, with great detail um, is amazing. And that, that, uh, pedanticness <laughs> and, and, and I'm sure there's another word too that yeah. I'm not hitting on right now is um is like like you know it's like the Torah it's like it's like really following it not cutting corners not being lazy not um mm -hmm. taking the easy road it's really doing it full on to the degree of to the best human degree possible in, yeah in those details and because if you like for me, I suppose I'm learning about Judaism more. A lot of it has to do with the COVID because I have time to, but a lot of it is just in my life because I'm listening and I just find I'm finding so much great resource with it. Yeah. Um, and living it more uh, consciously. Yeah. Um, and so I see the parallels between the two cultures. It's yeah, that's awesome. Well, speaking of family and speaking of listening, why don't you uh, why don't you give us some some music okay. whatever you want to do i'm going to change the screen so people are looking at you and not looking at me while you're singing let's pin you there you go here I'm you glad. go <laughs> um maybe i'll start with waking up your heart okay um, and uh These are all heart songs for some reason. I've everything. This one is um, waking up your heart, just feeling like, ah, I wish I could do this, you know? Um, so. I woke up this morning crying. But the sun was shining, saying, Don't cry. And who am I to think it's shining for me? It might as well be, cause I am for you. Wanna give you my heart, hope and hands On everything my life depends I'll be for you, given a chance And I promise not to tell I'll hide my feelings well Oh, of how Miserably I fail Waking up your heart It's not anything you say And yet it's everything like you Wanna give you my heart Hope and hands 
On everything my life depends I'll be for you Given a chance And I Promise not to tell I'll hide my feelings well Oh, of how Miserably I fail Waking up your heart Wanted to Tell you Exactly how I feel But a long time ago God and I made a deal So I, I promise not to tell I'll hide my feelings well oh of how miserably I fail waking up your heart waking up your heart waking up your heart <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you wonderful cool. cool um the next one is um the princess and the honeybee and um i don't think i've ever i've never played i haven't played these songs on this guitar and well this song ever <laughs> but i think turn up the guitar a little just a tiny bit if you're going to be uh picking Okay. It's good for strumming, but it's a little bit low with, uh, with picking. I'm, I'm going to turn my phone off because it's making a lot of noise. It's like going <laughs> off for some reason. That's why I had to adjust it. That's okay. I'm, just like, I'm sorry. I, but I, when I leaned forward and kind of tried to hold on to a chord. It's all good. Also, let me just, um, just turn my tune. Pretty so awesome, fun. huh? Yeah. You can really bring that right in, couldn't you? And on the harmonic. Oh, yeah. So cool. This guitar is pretty awesome. Correction, very awesome. I wish I never used the word awesome so that when I did use it, it popped out more. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, because it's running through. Next time, if there's a next time, I'll, um, I'll take another send from the other thing. I'm sort it's of setting good. this up a little different today. It's all good. So what's but, the story of this song? Okay. Oh, this is a good story. Um, I went to uh, to Denmark to um, help uh, lead um, as a professional songwriter um, a, a a songwriter retreat, and we uh, it's called the Listening Room, and it's 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 organized by this guy named Brett Perkins, and he has the his dream. Speaking of dreams, was to be able to have seven songwriter retreats one each year in different parts of the world. And he does. He has one on um, Inishir Island in Ireland. He has one on an island off the coast of um, Copenhagen, Copenhagen. Um, and I can't think of the name of the island, but that's where this was written. Um, he has one in California and one now, I think in Florence, Italy. He just has like, and it's so cool because he finds these places that are Pretty much nothing else is going on, so you're not really distracted. I mean, you could, you know, find a yeah. go out to a pub or whatever, and, or something like that. But also at times of the year when you may not go to those places, you know, so it might be cold and rainy or whatever. Or sometimes it's funny. I think just to tease him, um, it's beautiful, so you want to be outside <laughs> just kind of hanging out. But that adds to great songwriting too. So and you're just with a, you know, a core group of songwriters, probably like around twenty people, twenty twenty five. And uh, 
and you you pair you you get he chooses you get paired up with different people except on the last day, you get to choose who you want to write with. And this guy named Casper, K A S P E R, really wanted to write with me, and I was really glad because I really wanted to write with him too. He mostly speaks um, Danish and very little English. Although he understands English perfectly very well. <laughs> he just doesn't like to speak it a lot. Um, and he mostly, his main instrument is piano. So, mm -hmm. But he plays a little guitar. Anyway, we got together one morning, the morning I was leaving. We did, and there was, um, it was Thursday morning. And the uh, conference started on Sunday. Because when we all sort of paraded into this kind of like a B&B &B in, in, in Denmark. And so... Um, and you do a song a day is what you do is you pair up with someone and, you know, you get together with them in the morning, you refine it, hopefully in the afternoon and in the nighttime, you have to perform it for the group, uh, the two writers or three writers. So, uh, anyway, so we got together and I had to leave actually that afternoon. So I wasn't able to perform it with him that night. But, um, what happened was there was, um, this place had had a wedding earlier the afternoon on Sunday before we got there. And so in the main uh, area, there was a white rose in the in a vase on or a vase on any uh, on each of the tables in the room. And I would just walk by them each day. And most of them were, um, you know, kind of aging, drying out, getting, you know, the petals were bending and getting brown and falling off. But there was this one rose that was as pristine and vibrant four or five days later as it was on that Sunday when they all looked that way. So I picked it up that morning, that Thursday morning, or, and put it on the table in front of, in, in the center of the table between me and Casper. And, um, and I said, once upon a rose lived a very little princess. And then the song just we just took that statement and wrote this song out of that. Like we made up the story together. Awesome. I love that. <laughs> I never knew that story. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is the princess and the honeybee. All right. Okay. Um, by second numbers. Um, There may be a reason what the I am freaking blanking on this. <laughs> um, one second. Um, that's it. Once upon a rose Lived a very little princess Ruling all alone All settled on her throne She was the queen of everything That she could see Then she fell in love with the honeybee Every day at dawn As the sun lit up the petals The honeybee would come And find the rose's tongue She'd say hello But he'd ignore her and just go he was so busy he'd miss the kisses she would blow waiting waiting hoping dreaming that one day he would wake up She's the queen of all the garden, but she can't make him fall in love. One day she was 
was gone And at first he didn't notice But slowly he began To feel the coldness of the morn He never knew of all the love she felt for him and so it goes we'll never know what could have been oh yay what a great story i love that so thank sweet you. thank you that's great thank you and um i'm gonna do one more yeah yeah um i'll do i'll do won't let go so there's a miracle attached to this story yes absolutely um my two two miracles really uh one is that uh my dad was uh, uh having surgery having a big part of his lungs uh, removed, one third of his lungs removed. And um, I, I was stuck on the song. I had the story of the song, but I didn't know where it was going to be going. And in some songs, I find that I really just have to wait for an epiphany. And that's what happened with this. I was literally sitting on the floor in, in my friend's house in Nashville and Franklin, actually. And I heard my father's voice on the answering machine in the in the next room, and that was the morning after the surgery. I talked to my stepmother, so I knew he he lived, he made it through it. But to hear his voice was just like coming home, and um, uh, yeah. So so there's that. That's the real epiphany of the song. But prior to that, what sort of launched the song was that when I was about five or six, probably about six. Um, I had just gotten my training wheels off my bike and I could balance and ride and my street was flat and it was a dead end. So was, there was very little traffic on it. So you could play in the street and, you know, most of the hours of the day <laughs> and there'd be no problem, you know, like, you know, so, yeah. so I, so I rode my bike up down my street. Well, this was a Saturday or a Sunday and my dad said, uh, let's go off the street. Let's, let's, you know, can you, you know how to use the brakes and everything on the bike? And I'm like, yeah, but I didn't actually. I, um, I would just sort of either jump off the bike because <laughs> it was a flat street, you know, right, I mean? right, and um, or put my my feet out, feet to, down, yeah, you know, like Fred Flintstone to slow right. it down. <laughs> it worked for Fred. It worked for me. So, um, um, so we went off my street, and the the next street was. Um, uh, was 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 Lightfoot Drive, and I took a right off of the street, and I was and I was really building up speed because it was a, a an, an, an incline, yeah. and it was a big incline to me in my brain and my memory of it. It was like an you know almost like a ninety degree, but it was right. now looking at it, it's probably about a forty degree right. <laughs> when I see it because it's not very far from where I'm living right now. But um, anyway, uh, I was going. There was a car behind me. I could hear there was a car about to turn into me and I was like between them and out of control and going a thousand miles an hour as a six-year-old on my two-wheeler and trying to balance. And I saw there's sort of like a gaggle of people, adults talking, and I was like screaming, dad, dad. And he was like, the brakes, use the brakes. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, and he was on a bike behind me. So uh... I don't know how he would have, you know, Anyway, but thank God, one of the people, one of the, the man in this group of people, lunged into the street and 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 grabbed me off my bike as I was pummeling a hundred miles an hour down the street, and um, and say, and my bike flew out, and I was fine, and he saved my life. Wow! Yeah. So that was wow. that's the the story of it. Um, I love it. This is one of my favorites. Thank you for playing it. Thank you. The very first time I was learning to ride Without training wheels or you by my side Down a steep hill 
I took a ride. There was a car coming at me and one from behind. And you said, don't let go. Just hold on. Keep your eye on the road and your heart in a song. Whatever happened is already gone. Don't let go. Don't let go. Then when I was 10, you gave me a guitar. And I said, Dad, I'm gonna be a big star. And you said, Son, you better practice real hard. But to me, you already are. And don't let go. Just hold on. Keep your eye on the road and your heart in a song. Whatever happened is already gone. Don't let go. Don't let go. Then she took you to the doctor, get you checked out. See what that headache was really about. And when he returned, I feared news would be bad. Now I'm saying these words to you, Dad. Don't let go. Just hold on. Keep your eye on the road and your heart in a song. Whatever happened is already gone. Don't let go. Don't let go. Then I heard your voice. All my fear disappeared. Then I know exactly why we are here. It's for this moment to recognize that you will always be by my side and i won't let go i'm holding on got my eyes on the road and my heart in a song whatever happened is already gone i won't let go i won't let go I'm holding on, got my eyes on the road, and my heart in a song. Whatever happened is already gone. I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go. awesome thank you so much you are welcome the sound is okay it's working yeah. out okay sound is sounding good sounding really good you sound awesome as always thank you yeah i just worry about the technical part you know no, you're good cool so let's help people find you and let's talk about what's coming up next for you so if they want to find all this great music you can go to um sonia disappearfear.com it's all one run together and I'll put that in the show notes as well, but Sonia disappear fear.com. Um, and you're getting ready to be on tour second half of the year, right? You're finally going to be back and doing stuff. Is that right? Cause this is, you've yeah, been in COVID um, lockdown, right? Things. Well, the tour and the next tour that I'm, that's I'm scheduled for at this point is Germany. Uh, next, uh, uh, I think it starts in early, I think October 3rd is my first show. So, October and November and December um, in person I'm in Germany. Yeah. But you have something coming up in April that I think is an online. An I online do. Concert. I do. I have a online. Um, excuse me. It's a, a, a lesbian visibility day on April 26th. There'll be a live concert on my Facebook page, which is free. And it is uh, Sonia disappear fear. So on uh, Facebook. Uh, okay. I'll put that. that. In there and too. then I have a show at the, the, the uh, Lirio, um, Laurendium, uh, Laurendium. Okay. it's on my website <laughs> okay. under tour and it might even be on the front page of the website too. So, um, or under events, um, that, that are coming up. Lyra, I, 
I should have that in front of me, but I don't. I'm sorry. And I just turned off my phone. That's so okay. So that's, I'm going to believe in May. I'm going to put then I have all these things. In Zoom. Yeah, that's a Zoom concert. So that'll be awesome. I mean, not Zoom. Um, it'll also be, I think, on, on a Facebook page. And I think it's, uh, I think it's free also. Awesome. Um, where you can see it. And um, that's going to be cool. And uh, also have a concert with a, with an, a Turkish artist who's very, very popular in Turkey. He has like over a million hits, you know, like awesome. like one and a half million hits on his YouTube videos. So I can tell that's a lot of hits. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got a beautiful voice. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And one of the places actually that I'm going to be playing in, and in fact, this, she would be an awesome person for you to speak with. She is amazing. She is the, the person who started what we would consider liberal or reform in Judaism, we would call it uh, reform Judaism. Uh -huh. So she's opened up the religion of Muslim to women. <gasps> you can lead services. She wow. opened a mosque in Berlin. I and would love to women talk to can her. Pray oh. on the floor with, with everybody else on the carpet, you know. Yeah. And and she and she's the leader of the service, and she's a woman, and wow. she is from. Um, originally from, I think she's originally from Afghanistan, but she might originally be from Turkey. I'm not, I'm not okay. actually positive. I'd love to She and I spoke her. the other day. She speaks impeccable English and I am going to be performing at her mosque wow. <laughs> when I'm back in, in Germany. So I'm really excited about that. I'll be performing, um, um, at a, uh, at a church I know of, at a synagogue the Freud, in Freudenthal, which is also a first. And then I'll be at this mosque in Berlin, which is also a first. So I love it. it's a really cool setting. I mean, I, of course, I love playing in bars and, and theaters and, yeah. and everything. But I have to say, like, the churches have and, and uh, have a, the church I know has amazing acoustics. And actually, the synagogue does, too. Yeah, I've been there before just to, to sort of look into it. And it's not far from where I'm going to be staying too so it's just a it's wine country so there's yeah all kinds of asparagus and and wine vines <laughs> great so stuff. cool so, so i'm seeing behind you cds i'm seeing t-shirts i'm seeing all kinds of beautiful merchandise and so all of this is available on your website right if people want to yes thank you thank you yeah. yes i'm wearing um my infamous, love out loud uh, t-shirt love out loud t-shirt i love I that love this one and but we have it in you can see the shelves behind me are pretty full. So please, please, please. Yes. Yeah. Um, we have hoodies. They're tie dyed. Or we have solid colors. Everything we, we have solid colors like black and white or solid blue or gray. Or we have um, the distressed vintage ones, you know, that sort of look yeah. uh, like marbleized sort yeah, of. Yeah. You know? Great. So if people want to um, really embody the idea of disappear fear, they can actually yeah, and, wear it. And the highest quality of t shirt, too. It's um, they're thick t shirts. They're, um, they will last for decades, um, um, and they're awesome. And we have little children sizes. We have, we started, I think, um, like two, I think we started two to four, like I think two years old is the smallest one, but we also have bibs and onesies. I was going to say, I've seen onesies. <laughs> yeah, we have onesies for the little ones. And we actually, I don't know if we have any more of those, but we had like adult onesies. I Cindy has an adult onesie, which is really, really cool. That pink one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're so cozy because they're little like that fleecy kind of stuff on the inside. You'll yeah. never want to get out of it. It's the perfect COVID attire, actually, <laughs> now that we're coming out of COVID. <laughs> um, but, awesome. but it is for the winter. It's just like the thing you just want to be in. We have friends in Germany that got it, and they look so adorable. Um, Great. So, yeah. Anyways, so I will. Um... And I, I, it would be wonderful if uh for, for people to to get it and we have yeah that would be and beanies too we have beanies and because you know it snowed yesterday in germany and, and and holland and hailed the weather that we got like last week yeah. on the east coast they got now <laughs> and so it's kind of so for but for them it's april and, and yeah it's, uh, snowing. awesome <laughs> So if anybody's interested in any of that beautiful merchandise or you want to buy some CDs or get the MP3 downloads, you can go to soniadisappearfear.com forward slash store. And again, I'll put that in the show notes as well. Um, anything else you want to leave us with before we close our, our interview today, our time together, which has been so fun. Thank you. I, um, I'm, I can't wait to share this podcast with lots of people and, um, 
and I'm so glad that our friendship has survived, thrived, and flourished <laughs> through all this time. All um, this time. You are um, a, a, a forever beautiful light in my life, like a light blue. And I love <laughs> the painting behind you because the the I, I see the movement in it, and I love it. I just, it's so... Um, gathering and giving <laughs> yeah that's deepest painting deepa painted that I love one it. i love yeah. it i love it it's just it's it it's living <laughs> yeah it is um, it totally is awesome yeah. oh thank you so much my friend i love you and i appreciate you so so much and i really appreciate your time i love you <laughs> All right. So to all the listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. This is such a treat to be able to connect with another artist who's really living and doing her dream and her path and her purpose. And I hope that you received as much inspiration today as I did. I feel so filled up. My inner artist is just so, so happy. So if you did like this episode, please let your friends know about it. If you could leave a review, that would help me out so, so much. And always remember, that the key to magnifying your miracles is to know that your miracle is already here. Thank you, my friends. God bless you. Bye-bye.